Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Today we are going to start with Edu section pioneer research step 2 and here is the problem A, packing rectangles. The problem says we are given n rectangles of the same size with w width and edge length and we are required to find a square with the smallest possible size or length into which these rectangles can be packed. Also it is given that rectangles cannot be rotated. The input basically contains three variables whn and they can be up to 1e9. And we have to output the minimum length of the side of a square into which these rectangles can be packed. Now let's check for the given example. Here we are given 2, 3, 10 and the output is 9. So w is 2, h is 3 and n is 10. So it basically means we are given 10 rectangles with dimension 2 cross 3 and output we are having is 9 which means we can fit all these rectangles in a square with a minimum length of 9. Let's see how we can fit them. See vertically we can align 3 rectangles of 2 cross 3 dimension. Since the side of the square is of length 9, we can fit 3 rectangles with total length 3 3 3 as 9 while the vertical line can contain total 4 rectangles with side 2 2 2 and 2 resulting in total 8 while the total length of the square is 9. So we can in total have 4 cross 3 rectangle in it. So obviously 4 cross 3 is 12 which is bigger than 10. So all these 10 rectangles can fit in the square with the side 9. Let's see can we fit them in a square of length 8. Here we can see vertically we can only align two of these given rectangles since there will only remain two length which cannot accommodate the given rectangle and we can also not rotate them while the horizontal distance can accommodate four of them something like this and four cross two is eight which is smaller than ten so a rectangle with side eight cannot accommodate these ten rectangles that is why the answer is 9 since it's the minimum possible length of square which can accommodate all of these 10 rectangles and you can obviously contain all these 10 rectangles in a square with greater length than 9 that means 10, 11, 12 whatever but you cannot have a square with length smaller than 9 as we obviously saw here that the square with length 8 cannot accommodate these much of rectangles so obviously all the squares with smaller length also cannot accommodate them. Now let's derive an observation. We understood the example. And now let's see what basically we have to output. And what is the problem all about. So we can see that we have to output an integer x. Which basically signifies the length of the square. Which is the minimum length of such square that can accommodate all of the n rectangles given in the problem. So we till now know that we have to answer or we have to output the length of a square. So we have to do something on this length itself. Now let me ask you a question. What can be the minimum length of this square? Obviously it can be 0. And what can be the maximum length of this square? It can be something like 1e18 or whatever maximum range your language supports. We know that a square with length 0 will not accommodate even one rectangle of any given length. And also we can see since the constants are up to 1e9 for wh and n, a square with such a length of 1e18 can accommodate all of these n rectangles in it. So in the case of 0, we are certain that it cannot accommodate any of the rectangle while in the case of 118 we are certain that it can surely accommodate all of these n rectangles in it but still this 118 can result in overflow issue uh, for example let's say we are having a rectangle of dimension 1 cross 1 in that case horizontally we can accommodate 118 uh, rectangles while vertically we can also accommodate 118 and 118 cross 118 will surely result in overflow issue so for now let's say we have find some other variable r which can still accommodate these much of rectangles these n rectangles 
while it will also not result in any overflow issue. So we are again certain that this R size uh, square can also accommodate these n uh, rectangles in it. Now let's see what we can derive from this range. So we till now know that a square with length 0 cannot accommodate any rectangle in it while a square with length r can accommodate all of these n rectangles in it. Let's say if a square of certain length cannot accommodate these n rectangles in it, we will mark it as f or false. And if it can accommodate, we will mark it as t or true. So we can see that you can achieve this r if you start walking from 0 to r 1 by 1. And we also see this f somewhere turned t. So it must have happened somewhere between this range. We can see that let's say there is some number. The answer is f for this position. While at this position, it turned t. So we have to find this length where this transition occurred. And as you can see, for all these value, the answer would be f. While it got t just at this value. So it will be the minimum possible length of the square which can accommodate all of these n. So we have to find this number only. Now we understood it is something like f, f, f and so on until here. And then it got t, t, t and up till here. So we have to find this thing. A sequence with such properties known as bitonic sequence in which transition occurs only at one position and before that everything is same and after that everything is again same. It could be reverse that it could be TTT over here while FFF over here but in this particular case it is FFF over here up till this position and TTT from this to this position. So we basically have to find this length. Now let's discuss how to find it. So until now, firstly we have to find some r which certains that we can accommodate all of these n rectangles and will also not result in any overflow issue. And after that we have to find some value in between 0 and r which is the minimum possible which we earlier discussed that which basically result in the transition phase. So let's first discuss how to find this r. We will basically start with r equal to 1 and we will keep doubling this value until we get a square of length r which can accommodate all of these n rectangles. That's how we can find this r. So like this we have minimum value 0 and the maximum value r between which we have to search our answer. And since we just saw that the property of this range is something like f f f then t t t so we can easily apply a binary search on this range how to do it we know what this range is this is basically the length of the square so the parameter is the length of the square so we can find mid length then we can see if it is the transition point where it is true for this point and false for this point or maybe false for this point and true for this point. Otherwise, if we landed on a point which is false, then we have to check in the right side or if we have landed on a point which resulted in T on both sides, then we will search on this side. So that's how we will do a binary search on it. I hope you understood it, what we are going to do. Now let's jump to the code. First of all, we have to take wh and n as input. After that, we will define the range in which l will be 0 as we discussed earlier. And for now, r will be 1. And we will also have a mid parameter or mid variable. Now let us create a boolean function, which will basically check for a given side of a square, can we accommodate n rectangles of the given dimension in it or not. So it will be something like bool prd and it will basically have w and h which are the dimension of the given rectangles and total number of rectangles 
and we will have x which means the side of the square now we have to calculate how many total rectangles we can accommodate in a square with length x so let's say it is a count now we can see for a vertical length we can accommodate let's say it is nm1 we can accommodate total x by w of the total uh, rectangle in it while for horizontal length we can accommodate x by h rectangles in it so the total rectangles will be nm1 star nm2 as we discussed in the discussion so it will basically return if this count is greater than equal to n that means true so it will return true in this case when count will be greater than equal to n otherwise it will return false so this is it so firstly we have to find r as we discussed earlier so r will be such that that it should contain all of these n rectangles so we basically put whn and r in the prd function so until it is false it will keep running and the r will get double every time and it will run until the prd returns a positive value which means that we return such r which basically can contain all of these n rectangles so we are done until r now we have got our range that is from l equal to 0 up to r now we will write a binary search logic for the actual problem here we will have a while loop and it will run until the l plus 1 is smaller than r which basically means the difference between l and r is at least 2 now we will find a mid that is l plus r minus l by 2 which assures no overflow issue now if we find the side is true which means it can contain all of these n rectangles in it then we basically have to search in the left that means we have to do r equal to mid otherwise if it is false we simply have to do l equal to mid which means we are searching in right and automatically whenever this l plus 1 will become greater than equal to r it will come out of the loop and you can see always this l will contain a position which will return false while r will contain a position which will return true so we have to basically return true one since we have also discussed over here we have to return the position which contains true so we have to see out or print r as the answer for this problem now i have already taken this input here in the input file 2310 let's remove this output and see if this code gives the same answer for the given input as you can see it gives 9 now let's try to submit it in the problem And as we can see it got accepted so that's it i hope you understand the problem and if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment section please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you